Hi, and welcome back. I'm Ms. Warnow. We're going to continue our discussion of the molds. I would like for you to have out your periodic table, paper to take down notes and examples, and a calculator so you can calculate the problems along with me. So we talked before about the mass of an element, and so we talked about where do you get that, um, where do you find the molar mass of an element, and we know it's from the periodic table. But what if you have a compound? In that case, you add up the molar masses of all the elements in the compound to get the molar mass for the compound. If the formula contains subscripts, you need to count the element uh, the same number of times as the subscript. So like H2O, you count the hydrogen twice, and the oxygen once. So it says find, um, finding molar masses of compounds. So we have water setting here, so this is how we would do it. And you will need to show work. Okay, so I'm gonna show you two different ways of showing your work. You have hydrogen and oxygen, so you can say, oh, I have two hydrogens there, I have one oxygen. And then we can go look on the periodic table to say, well, what's the mass of one oxygen? And it's 1.008. And then, um, excuse me, what's the mass of one hydrogen? And then one oxygen is 16.00. And you'd say two times 1.008, and you should get 2.16 here. And then one times 16 is 16. And then what you'll do is add these up, and you end up with 18.02 grams per mole. When we do molar masses, um, when we go to write the final molar mass, we always just carry it out two decimals, um, just like we did with the average atomic mass. And notice I also have the unit there. Then over here, um, you should recognize this as calcium um, hydroxide. So here's another way you could do it. You could say, how many calciums do I have? One. And look on the periodic table at what the mass of uh, one calcium is, and it's 40.08 plus you can look, okay, how many oxygens do I have? Well, this two is multiplied to the subscripts in here, and there's an understood one here, so two times one is two, so we have two oxygen there. And look on the periodic table, and it's 16.00 for one. Plus, then you have um, two hydrogens, and on the periodic table, hydrogen is 1.008. And then you do the math here. This kind of looks weird. We kind of used this setup when we did uh, average um, atomic mass, and so when you do that, what you're actually going to get in your calculator is 74.096, but remember I said that we always carry out our molar masses two decimal places, so that's actually going to be 74.10, because this 9 will round up, okay, and you end up with grams per mole, all right? You should pause the video and try to do NH3, which is ammonia. Remember, that's one of the compounds, uh, water and ammonia, and methane was the other one that you need to know. And then aluminum nitrate, all right? And so then here would be the answers. And I worked on both ways. I used the method of just saying how many in the mass, how many the mass, you get, um, that. Oh, and, um, and we also want to write the, um, the substance out. Let me move this up away. Oops. Okay. All right, if you have any questions about this process, please see your um, teacher. That's more. So how many grams um, of ammonia are in 25 moles of ammonia? Well, remember, ammonia from memory, should, you should know, is in H3. All right, so we're going to start by writing down our given. It was 25.0 moles of ammonia. We want to get rid of moles, so it's on top, so we'll put it on bottom, so it will mathematically cancel out. And we're trying to um, get to grams. We do know a relationship between moles and grams, is that one mole is equal to the molar mass. But now what we have to do, one mole, we have to go calculate that molar mass. So there's one nitrogen, it's 14.01, plus you have your three hydrogen, and each one is 1.08. And so when you do that, you actually come up with a molar mass of 17.03. And so this is set up dimensional analysis. And then so when you work that, you get 426 grams of ammonia. And I just want to remind you that I'm writing the unit and the substance, the unit, the substance, the unit, the substance. And in my final answer is the unit and the substance, as well as paying attention to significant digits. The next question is, how many moles of silver nitrate are in 54 grams of silver nitrate? And so you see here, you're still having to use your nomenclature. 
after all brackets, we want to get rid of grams. It's on top, so it goes on bottom. And pretty much, if you're not in moles, you're going to need to get to it. And so we do know relationship between grams and moles, and it's that um, one mole, the one of my mole, is equal to the molar mass. So, um, or the molar mass of silver. There's one silver, and then it's um, 107.87 plus you have one nitrogen, and from the periodic table, one is uh, 14.01, plus you have three oxygen. So just as a reminder, this number is how many you have, and this number I'm getting from the periodic table. And you're supposed to have your periodic table out when you're watching this video so that you can also see where I'm getting these numbers. So these cross out, and so now we're in moles, which is what we wanted, so we multiply 54 times 1, and we divide it by 169.88, and we end with 0 0.318 moles of silver nitrate. Once again, I have shown all of my work, and you are expected to show all of your work as well. So here's another conversion factor, a new one. We've already talked about one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, and one mole equals mole mass. But um, Avogadro also discovered that um, when he was playing around with some gases, that at the same temperature and pressure, equal volumes of gases contain equal moles. So that gives us a conversion factor of here, that one mole equals 22.4 liters at STP, which stands for standard temperature pressure. And standard temperature and pressure is at zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. So under these conditions, one mole of any gas, it could be neon, it could be carbon dioxide, it could be oxygen, always has a volume of 22.4. And you're expected to have that memorized. How many moles of neon are in 44.8 liters of neon? So we write down 44.8 liters of neon. And we want to get rid of liters. It's on top, so we put it on bottom. And do we know a relationship between liters and moles? Yes, we do. That one mole is equal to 22.4 liters at STP. So we can put moles here. It's that one mole is equal to 22.4 liters. That crosses out. And so when we get our answer here, let's flip on over here, we end up with um, 2.00 moles of neon. Now when you punch this in your calculator, you just get the number two. But this has three significant digits and we need to include three in our answer. Next one says, how many liters of carbon dioxide gas are in 0.33 moles of carbon dioxide gas at STP? And just as a little chemistry thing, when you see CO2 here, I wouldn't say CO2. You now know what that is. I would say the name of it so you're keeping your nomenclature and practicing your, um, your naming of chemical uh, formulas handy in your mind. So we start by writing down our given, which is 0 0.33 moles of CO2. We want to get rid of moles. It's on top, so mathematically we'd have to put it on bottom. And we're trying to get to liters. Do we know relationship? Oh yes, we do. That one mole is equal to 22.4 liters at STP. So those cross out. So when you multiply the top here, you end up with 7.4 liters of um, CO2. Notice that I'm writing my number, answer, paying attention to significant digits. I'm including my unit, and I'm writing my substance in my final answer, and you are expected to do that as well. So putting it all together, how many molecules are in 45.6 grams of carbon dioxide? Well, we start by writing down our given. This is what we were doing the, uh, at the beginning of school, dimensional analysis. Carbon dioxide is CO2. This is what we did in the last unit. We draw brackets. We want to get rid of grams. It's on um, top, so we put it on bottom. Now, we don't know relationship between grams and molecules, or we always want to go to moles. Okay, So we want to use the moles as a... Uh, as a little step and stool here. So we're going to get to moles, and what's the relationship between moles and grams? That one mole is equal to the molar mass. And so the molar mass of CO2, I know is 44.01, but I'll just remind you how to do that. There's one um, carbon. I look on periodic table, has a mass of 12.01, plus we have two oxygen, and look on periodic table, each oxygen has a mass of 16. So when you add that up, multiply and add that up, you get 44.01. 
Now we're in moles, but we want molecules, so we can keep on going. So moles to molecules, and I probably didn't leave myself enough space here, but one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So we are left with molecules. And so when you punch this into your answer, um, into your calculator, you should get 6.24 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CO2. So how many grams of calcium hydroxide are in 2.34 times 10 to 23rd formula units? We have to use formula units because calcium hydroxide is an ionic compound. We use molecules here because this is a covalent compound. So we write down 2.34 times 10 to the 23rd formula unit of calcium hydroxide, CaOH2. That's how the nomenclature. We want to get rid of formula units, so it's on top, so we're going to put it on bottom. And we need to get to moles. If you're not in moles, you're pretty much going to have to get to moles. So one mole of calcium hydroxide is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. If we stopped here, we would be in moles, but we want grams, so we have to keep going. Whatever unit's up top comes down on bottom. Now, do we know a relationship between moles and grams? You bet we do. And it is that one mole is equal to the molar mass of calcium hydroxide. So then you'd calculate, you'd punch in your calculator one for one calcium, one times 40.08 plus two times um, 16 plus two times 1.008. And so when you do that, let me see here, you get 74. Point one oh, I believe we did that molar mass earlier. So we do equals here. We multiply everything across the top and divide it by the bottom. And I get, I'll change colors here since I'm running out of space, 28.8 .8 grams of calcium hydroxide. All right, on the next one, it says how many grams of helium gas are in 1.25 liters of helium gas? So I'll write down our given, 1.25 liters of helium. Since this is at STP, we know that one mole is going to be equal to um, 22.4 liters. So we do this, one mole is equal to 22.4 liters. If we stopped here, we would be in moles, but we want grams, so we have to keep going. Whatever unit's up top is going to come down on bottom, and we know the relationship between moles and grams. It's that one mole is equal to the molar mass, and so we just look at the molar mass from the periodic table. And so when we work this one out, we end up with 0 0.223 grams of helium. You gotta love dimensional analysis. All right, putting it all together. So wrapping up the ideas, we know that one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to 23rd. We know that one mole is equal to the molar mass element or compound, and we know now that one mole equals 22.4 liters of any gas at SCP. But we can also relate moles to a chemical formula. So what if we're talking about water? We could say one mole of water gives us two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. All right, so let's see if we can work a problem with that. 7.90, it says how many moles of hydrogen are in 7.9 moles of water? So we write down 7.90 moles of water. We want to get rid of the moles of water, but we still want to be in moles. We just want to be in moles of hydrogen. And so we look and we say, oh, for every one of these, how many hydrogens are you going to get? Two. And so when you multiply that out, you should get 15.8 moles of hydrogen. We can also relate moles to ions. How many moles of ions are in one mole of magnesium chloride? So magnesium chloride, remember, is MgCl2. So how many moles of ions? Well, for every one mole of magnesium chloride, we get um, one mole of magnesium ion, and we also get two moles of chloride ions. So what's the total? Three. One. And two, three. So how many moles of chloride ions are in 23.4 grams of magnesium chloride? Well, let's work it. We start by writing down our given. We're not in moles, so we really want to get the moles. So we can get rid of 
we get to moles here. And we know that one mole is equal to um, the molar mass of this, and this molar mass is going to be 95.20. You should pause the video and calculate that yourself. Now we're in moles of magnesium chloride, but it wanted moles of chloride ions. So we're going to have to do a mole ratio between the compound, so moles of magnesium chloride, we can get to moles of chloride ions. For every one of these, we get two moles of chloride ions. And so when we work that out, we get 0 0.492 moles chloride ions. So the ions never go away, the dimensional analysis never goes away, and you're just steadily learning more and more relationships in terms of the mole. This concludes video two. Be sure you took in-depth and high-quality notes to have good example problems um, in your notes and be ready to come to class with good questions.